Hello dear friends, and you and Humphreys here, just a short message on, on the fact that we need to look to the Word of God for a word in due season, and may the Lord bless this to your heart. I want to speak to you on the subject that we ought to keep in mind in our lives, uh, the, uh, the highlights of high living, highlights of high living. The Bible says over in uh, in Philippians in the fourth chapter of Philippians, Jesus, uh, Paul said, "I I do not I'm not yet perfect, not yet perfect. But this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind me. And in order to live the highlights of high living, we need to learn to forget the past, put away those things that are behind you and forget them, and go go on to the future." And he said, I press on to the mark of the high prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The Lord has called us to a high high calling. And it, and it means high living for the Lord. And I want to speak to you on some highlights of that high living. The Bible says in number one, one, we need to first of all know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. When we know Him as our Lord and Savior, we are saved forever. And we are bought, we are, we are bought by the blood and we belong to God. We are saved from the devil's hell and we have a home in heaven. I want that for you. I want you to pray if you've never done it before and ask the Lord God to forgive you. And that, that you believe that Jesus paid for all your sins on Calvary. Uh, on the cross and that he rose again and uh, you're asking him to come into your heart and help you live for him when you do that the Bible says you shall be saved forever and God will write your name in heaven and then we need to learn to live the high high living uh, on the high living of God and the high calling of God and so it's important the Bible teaches us how we to do that and here are just a few scriptures that might help us to learn how to live closer to God. The Bible says for Paul was, was leaving Ephesus and he said, I must go to Rome. Well, this was God's calling. He said, I do not know what awaits me except the Holy Spirit testifies that bonds and afflictions will wait for me. Well, <laughs> that's a pretty, pretty dreary future for Paul. He said, I know that bonds and afflictions, boy. But here's what he says. But, these, but uh, these things do not move me, for I am persuaded that I will finish the course with joy, and I will finish the course, and that I will uh, uh, complete the ministry which I've been called to by Jesus Christ. And so here's one way we can live the, the life that will please God. Forget those things behind and reach forth what's before you. And do not count just every every hour, every day as having to be something very pleasant and useful and bright and blessed. There will be times when you'll have problems. Oh dear Christian friend, your heart will be broken at times. But these are for necessary purposes. And the secret is, do not count, let, do not count your life dear to yourself. My problem is, I'm, I'm too concerned about me and not about, enough about God and others. Oh, my Lord Jesus was willing to give himself for me and for you. We must give ourselves to him. And he was delivered. He was in the fire. He was not brought, he, he did not escape the fire. He had to go through it, but he was delivered out of it. And you'll have some fire you have to go through. But praise God, you will not be left there. You will be delivered out of it. It's coming. And you'll have good days and blessed days. And God will bless you. This is part of the way that we live. To please God. To serve God. And to walk on the higher ground. Remember this. That whatever we, we sow we shall reap. The Bible says God. This is in Galatians in the 6th uh, six, uh, six chapter. Uh, he said God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap. If he sows of the flesh, he shall reap corruption. But if he sows of the Holy Spirit, he shall reap life everlasting. 
And hereby I say unto you, Oh, praise God, don't give up, because you will reap if you faint not. You're going to reap good things, Christian. Keep on forgiving. Keep on loving. Keep on believing. Keep on keeping on to serve your Lord. And God's going to bless you. And you're going to reap a harvest. And we'll learn to walk on higher ground. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God. So we shall. We shall look far and press forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Then we pray. We ask, have another scripture I want us to read. It's over in the book of Psalms in this 44th Psalm. And it says, I will boast in my God, and I will praise the name of the Lord forever. I will, the psalmist said, I will boast in my God. Oh, there's one person that you can brag about, and that's the Lord your God. You can brag about Jesus. You need not brag about yourself. You need not even brag about others, but you can boast and brag about God. Brag about Jesus and what He's done for you. Brag about Jesus and what He's helping you get through. Brag on Him and praise the Lord your God. Praise Him. Praise Him all the time. Praise Him in good times and bad times. Praise Him all the time because He's always there for you. And He loves you very, very much. He's going to carry you through. He's going to bring you out. And so look to Him and live forever. And know that God is there to help you. God will never leave you. Sometimes, sometimes when you're hurting and things seem to be going so wrong, your head will tell you that uh, God is not there. <clears throat> but your heart, your heart will tell you that Jesus is very, very near. Always near. In time of trouble, He is there to help you through. Oh, praise the Lord. May God bless you. And may we learn to walk on the higher ground. Praise the Lord. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Oh, I'm not worrying about where I be found. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. Ah, praise God. I'm looking up to higher ground. I'm looking up where I'll be found, my prayer, my aim, forever found, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. For my heart has no desire to stay, where doubts arise and fears dismay, but still I'll pray while heaven I bound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, my faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. May the Lord bless you, dear friend, and may you learn to walk on high ground. These are some of the highlights. We need to forgive others. We need to love others. We need to love God. The Bible says these things are so important. So important we need to recognize. First Thessalonians, the second chapter, it says these are some things we need to do. And that is to warn the unruly. We're to warn the unruly and tell them out of love that there's a destination coming for them that is terrible and bad. And that hell is a portion of those who have not accepted Christ. And we need to learn that we're going to reap what we sow. And we need to warn the unruly with love. And then we says that we're to comfort the feeble-minded. And so many people are spiritually feeble-minded. And we need to comfort them as we are comforted uh, in our, in our feeble-mindedness. And then he says, oh, praise the Lord. Be patient. Be patient to all men. Be patient with all of all men. Because God is so patient with you. In these ways we learn to walk on higher ground. God bless you, my friend. God keep you close to him and help you and help me to walk on higher ground until we meet. We meet in heaven together and we'll be there forever. 
Praise the Lord. Amen and amen.